Apollo 13, 1970. Collaboration used to solve a real world business problem. So the storyline is mechanical failure, needed to make real time decisions, lives at stake. How can we solve this crisis being in the same room together, let alone calling folks from around the world to help out? Different modalities, different means of collaborating, different ideas being generated, folks taking notes, chalkboards, no whiteboards yet, acetate projector with a burned out wall. And at the end of it, actually reaching a solution which saved lives. So if you think about the end net goal of collaborating, collaboration in and of itself is really kind of fun, but the end net result is how do we actually solve a mission critical problem, a business problem, how do we generate thought, how do we close on new ideas, how do we bring ideas and thoughts and, and, and revenue generating streams to market. That's the end net result of collaboration. And as you can see, these are real world pictures taken within the past 90 days. 1970, 2013. You can see not a lot has changed. If you think about the dimensions of collaboration and what many of our customers and partners are experiencing today, there's really four varying levels or sophistication or maturity from a collaborative perspective. And you can see, you know, really, Audio is kind of base level communication, and that's either in person, that's on the phone, that's voice over IP, that's Skype, any way you can communicate, audio is the base level. Actually seeing someone remotely while you're speaking with them is a nice value add. So being able to collaborate from around the world in, in, in video, wherever you are, uh, with another party, that's a great thing. Screen sharing and or application sharing, that next evolution in collaboration. How can we have meaningful data sharing while experiencing video, while having an audio stream in a meaningful fashion? But really the fourth dimension of collaboration, which is the utopian state of all collaboration, is how do we actually enable organizations, enable our mutual customers, enable our partners to have a venue and a forum and a format to collaborate, which takes all means and modes of communication and allows for bi-directional interaction. So not only can I speak with someone if I'm remote, I can actually collaborate now in a way that is seen by the rest of the participants around the world. And if you think about where most of our customers are today, they're really in kind of the level one or level two areas of collaboration. So most folks feel comfortable having voice conversations. Most folks have introduced some level of video conferencing. But when you get into application sharing, file sharing, real-time collaboration, and then bi-directional reciprocal collaboration, we really have very few customers or partners in that top tier. And that top tier represents a white space for all of us. And I consider it my personal mission to rescue each one of those customers to make sure that they're enabled to have the most optimal collaborative environment possible. Now, the value proposition for the customers in terms of providing a heightened level of collaboration, you know, certainly you can see up here, but the takeaway is, you know, 90% of organizations that are in that top four and five level of maturity report significant value in being able to bring new ideas to market, bring new products to market, collaborate on ideas and thoughts and revenue generating streams from around the world, and actually have it manifest itself in real world dollars. That's what it's all about. Fast forward now to our current UC environment, Unified Communications and Collaboration. And I love this slide. I blatantly stole this slide from Microsoft. And it's a great slide because if you think about all the means and modes of collaboration, whether it's core on the office application for video conferencing, audio conferencing, you know, certainly persistent chat, IM, extending the presence, uh, web conferencing, voicemail, telephony, and now embracing of uh, the Link and Skype Federation, so extending now into the click to communicate world, so you have a multitude of different folks you're enabled with. What about the conference rooms and the meeting rooms? We have a huge opportunity to turn those into real productive centers of excellence around the world, so that now I, as a participant, actually being in a physical meeting space, have all the tools I need to interact with my colleagues and peers and partners and channel development uh, relationships all over the world in a way that's meaningful to me. So again, many of you may live this. I, I used to live this every day. I would walk into a meeting room with my laptop and I would see a multitude of different cables there. I may be maybe a USB connection. I had to dial a speakerphone number or I had to plug in a projector and I didn't have the right driver and the resolution was off. And anywhere from eight, 10, 12 minutes of an initial meeting 
is consumed by trying to get set up in a way that allows me to be productive. Think about that multiplied by the millions of meetings around the world. And if, and if your organization is like ours, every meeting room space is precious and it's back to back to back to back. And if I consume the first 15 or, or 12 or 18 minutes just trying to get set up to allow me to effectively collaborate, that's a third of the meeting, 25% of the meeting that really is just been wasted. Smart is bringing to market, along with Microsoft, smart room systems for Link. And for those of you that have been exposed to Link or may have used Link previously, it really is a collaborative experience that many of our customers around the world are rolling out very, very aggressively. And, and the benefit of a Link room system, and specifically a smart room system for Link, is the fact that it's very, very easy. It's simplistic. It allows somebody even like me to walk in and execute a meeting in an effective fashion. And the whole end goal is, how am I able to enter a conference room and have an asset that's already part of the network that I schedule using Outlook because I know how to use Outlook, and I can simply invite people to the meeting and walk in, and in one touch I can join the meeting and have full fidelity voice, full fidelity video, and application sharing inside of a device that looks like this. That's the end goal, and the feedback from our customers and partners so far has been, wow, this is really, really simple. We love the touch interface. We love the ability to actually ink over applications in real time, not just me as a presenter presenting out, but also taking real time feedback and collaboration elements from folks around the world who are able to either ink and or annotate on their device, whether it's a mobile device or a laptop or a fixed device, and have it manifest itself in the same meeting that we're all part of. The inspired collaboration model is something that we are continuing to evolve and we have a database of customers and partners around the world that actually has participated in a collaboration assessment. And, and we would encourage each of you as an organization and certainly your end customers, feel free to participate in it. And it's a really good benchmark in terms of gauging where your customers and partners are on the evolution of the dimensions. Again, dimension one through dimension four. And again, rallying around the shared mission of making sure our customers and partners are at a point of maturity to take full advantage of their collaborative capabilities in a way that's meaningful for them.